Welcome to day 12 of the 30 day My D for SOC Analyst Challenge, which is a challenge that I created for the sole purpose of helping aspiring SOC analysts obtain practical experience in 30 days. If you're interested in following along with this challenge, I would highly recommend that you pause this video and start from day one if you haven't done so already. By the end of this video, you'll have successfully set up an SSH server up in the cloud and also learn how to review authentication logs in real time. Let's get started. To get started, you want to head over to vulture.com and sign in. Once you're signed in, click on deploy on the top right corner and select deploy new server. From here, we don't really need this to be super beefy, so we can click on cloud compute shared CPU. I'll select Toronto. And for the image, I'll use Ubuntu version 24.04. As for the plan, I'll select regular cloud compute. No thanks. And I'll select, let's do the first one right here which is one CPU and one gig of memory. We don't need any auto backups and we do not need IPv6. As for the server settings, I'll just leave this as default. Now for the server name, this is pretty important, especially if you plan on following the giveaway, it must include your handle. Similar to what I did for the Windows Server machine, it must be named mydfir-linux-and your username slash handle, which in my example is Steven Rocks. I'll click on deploy now. And now our status changed to running. Let's go ahead and select our server and it's probably still installing. Yes, it is. I mean, we can check the console just to make sure. And it is. All right, I'll wait a couple minutes, grab some water, grab some food and come back. All right, after a couple minutes, let's take a look here. We do have a login, so that's good. Now I am not going to be working in the console. Instead, I will open up a PowerShell session and let's SSH into our server. Type in SSH root at IP address, hit enter, type in yes. And then for the password, let's copy that here, paste that in and we're good. Perfect. First thing I'll do is update our repositories, type in apt-get update and apt-get upgrade dash Y. Once this is done updating and upgrading, clear out the screen. And as an FYI, all of the authentication logs are stored under the following directory. So I'll type in CD to change into the directory of slash var slash log. And if I were to type in LS, we have a bunch of different logs here. The one that we're interested in the most is this auth.log. This will contain all of the authentication related activity. So if we wanted to see some interesting authentication attempts, we can type in cat auth.log, hit enter. Now we don't see too much activity here because we just spun up the server, but I guarantee you that if you leave this on for at least a day, you should start seeing a lot of failed authentications. In fact, I'll leave this on for a couple hours and come back to it just so you can see what it looks like. It's been about 30 minutes now. Let's take a look at our auth.log and see what's inside. And ooh, look at that. We have some failed passwords, invalid user, and there's also connection closed. So there is a lot of failed passwords going on here. Let's do some command line magic to only look for failed attempts. I'll type in grep I to ignore case sensitivity and I'll type in failed and then point it over to auth.log. And this will filter for all of the entries that contain failed. Now, I don't really care about any of the invalid users. Instead, I want to only look for where the user is root because that is the only user account that I have for my SSH server. To do that, I'll just add in another grep dash I to ignore case sensitivity, type in root. And there you go. We have three entries. Now, if I only wanted the IP address, we can perform what is called a cut command. The cut command will help me select data from a particular column specified by a delimiter. For example, if I type in dash D for delimiter, and I want my delimiter to be a space, so I'll surround it in a single quote, and then I'll type in dash F for field, and I'll say one. What this is going to do is select the first column that is delimited by a space, which looks like to be the date, month, and time. And yeah, that is correct. Now, if I were to say field two, I will have the mydfir-linux-stevenrocks, which is the computer name. Because if we take a look at the log entry, which is this one right here, we can see that it is delimited by a space. So this right here will be field one. This is field two. This is field three. 
field four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So our IP is located under field nine. I'll clear out the screen here just to make it a little bit more neater. And I'll say dash F nine. And now look at that. We have our IP address. Pretty cool. I am going to leave this on just to generate some additional logs. And that way we can start seeing a bunch of failed attempts and hopefully no successful attempts. At least not yet. That was quite easy, right? You have successfully set up your own SSH server up in the cloud. And we also got to see failed authentication attempts towards our server in real time. What you saw in the logs were actually a subset of brute force attacks, which I discussed on day 11. In the next video, I'll go over how you can install the Elastic Agent onto our SSH server. So then we can begin forwarding logs into our Elasticsearch instance, and then we can begin querying our logs there rather than the server itself. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.